Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we are looking at an ionic and covalent compounds lab. So this is gonna be on your lab report. Go ahead and fill this out as we go along during our lab. Notice we are testing five different substances. So we have sodium chloride, sucrose, calcium chloride, wax, and rubbing alcohol. We're just gonna use isopropyl alcohol today. Here are their chemical formulas for you. So we can kind of take these formulas and see from the periodic table placement if they are ionic or covalent compounds. Now we know that ionic compounds have a metal and a non-metal, and because that metal is present, they should be really good conductors of electricity, at least in their aqueous state. In other words, when they're dissolved in a liquid. And then if we have all non-metals present and no metals there, we have a covalent bond. And those really should not be conducting electricity for the majority of the time because there's just not a metal there to have electricity flow through it. So as we move along, go ahead and put down the state of matter at room temperature, whether it conducts electricity uh, without water first, and then once we mix in the water, is it soluble? In other words, is it dissolving in the water? Um, is it conductive once it's in the water? And how long does it take to melt? And then of course, is it ionic or covalent? Okay, so this is our lab setup. This is pretty much everything you need. Notice I just kind of divided up all the materials and put everything out. The only other thing you're gonna need is a beaker of water and a pipette. You're gonna need to cut your aluminum in five little strips. And this is a quick and easy way to make a little bowl with it, but you could also just wrap it around your thumb. The bowls don't need to be very large in size. They just need to make sure that it can hold the liquid and the powders that you're dealing with so it doesn't fall out, especially when you're putting it on the hot plate. This is kind of what they look like when they're all done. So we are gonna be testing conductivity today. This is the conductivity meter and I'm showing it to you in tap water because I don't have distilled water. And you can see that it is lighting up ever so slightly showing us that there's some trace minerals um, and we're gonna to get to that in a second. Right now, I went ahead and I filled my well plate with our five different chemicals that we are going to test. And I went ahead and I used a pipette and filled it with some of our tap water. And we're gonna give it a stir to see if it is soluble. Remember, soluble means it can it dissolve, right? Does it have the ability to dissolve in water or not? Of course, rubbing alcohol is already a liquid. We are not going to be adding any water to that because it's already a liquid and it is miscible, so it can dissolve in water, um, but we're not gonna be testing it. So just stir these up. Make sure you use a new stick to stir every single time so that you do not contaminate each well um, with the last well substance. Um, but I do wanna mention we are using tap water instead of distilled water. If you use distilled water, your conductivity should be zero with uh, distilled water. So if you can get it, go ahead and try it. With tap water, there are trace minerals, including metals. So we're gonna end up with a little bit of conductivity, even on ones that aren't supposed to truly con uh, conduct electri electricity, you guys. So um, let's take it with a grain of salt. We went ahead, turned on our conductivity meter. We're gonna put it in our rubbing alcohol first, is just isopropyl alcohol. Make sure you always clean off your probe before you put it in the next chemical and here's our sucrose it did light up that's most likely just from our tap water same thing with the wax and the water it's most likely just from the tap water um, and then our sodium chloride is very bright and then our calcium chloride is the last and again it is very bright okay now it's time to check and see how long it takes each of our substances to melt so go ahead and get your little uh, aluminum foil bowls out and put a about um, a very small portion into each one, a little bit bigger than a grain of rice size if you can. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, just try to do your best with this. Make sure you make note of what sample is going into what little bowl so you can accurately depict what is happening here as you start to place them on the hot plate and see them melt. We're um, gonna place them in a circular pattern around our hot plate. So do not put any directly in the middle as the heat would not be the same for each one then. So just try to place them in a circle and you can see that I've already preheated this hot plate so it is already hot. 
Um, and almost instantly, our isopropyl alcohol is starting to boil. You can see those bubbles happening and it is already um, boiling and evaporating away from our little bowl that we have. As soon as any of these start to melt, or in this case, evaporate and boil away, we will remove them from the hot plate for safety. Please make sure that you do use some kind of um, silicon holder or um, a safety mitt in order to take them off and not burn yourself. You can see that I'm using one here to remove the isopropyl alcohol. And then we are gonna keep an eye on the rest. And um, you can see the wax is pretty much melted. So we're gonna go ahead and call that one and take that one off as well. And then we have three remaining and if you give it a little bit of time, keep watching, don't take your eyes off of it. You can see that our sucrose is kind of starting to turn a very, very light pale shade of yellow. So we need to watch that one super close because um, it's gonna go very quick as it starts to kind of caramelize on us, right? So you can see here, it's kind of yellowy. If we let this go too long and it all melts down, it will start to get a very deep shade of brown and then it will start to burn and you will see that it's it will smoke eventually. I do not leave it on there that long. I go ahead and I take it off. But if you see smoking happening, that's because something's burning here. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up now because our last two are going to take a very long time and a very high temperature in order to melt. In fact, after our five minute period, they have not began to melt at all. And I just wanted to show you that and make note of that. All right, you guys, and that is the conclusion of our lab. I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like this video for more. I'll see y'all next time. Bye everybody.